Lillian Gobitis Close, what a thrill for Phil Donahue and I to be here. I am the one with the thrill. <laughs> and the backdrop of this is the Robert Jackson Center, of which I am the president and the founder. We are very conscious about the legacy of Justice Jackson, and one of the big parts of his legacy is his opinion that he wrote in West Virginia versus Barnett. And a few years ago, we had the privilege of having the two Barnett sisters come to Jamestown, New York, together with scholars, Sean Francis Parker, together with the Robert Jackson biographer, and a law clerk from Harlan, Justice Harlan Stone's clerk, who was there during the Barnett case. And this was about five years ago. Thereafter, and it was wonderful, it was filmed by C-SPAN, just so exciting. Then, a year afterwards, we had a guy named Phil Donahue, you may have heard of him, came to the Jackson Center, and we had a chance to get in to talk to him about his thoughts about Jackson. And he talked about a lady named Lillian Gobitis. He talked about Barnett's. He talked about Justice Jackson with a great deal of passion. Then, to put this all into perspective, just a few months ago, while on the street corner in Jamestown, New York, a fellow member of the Kingdom Hall in Jamestown came up and thanked me for putting on the Barnett program. And he made the terrible mistake of saying, is there anything I can do for you, Greg? <laughs> and that was a mistake, because I said, yes, there is no Barnett case if there wasn't a Gobitis case. And the Gobitis case is extremely important. I would like to know if Lillian Gobitis is still among us. And John Lanetta sought you out, which led to you and me having a conversation, and you graciously inviting us down here to come and talk about this. And so to me, it's just exciting. And what was really more exciting is when I reached out to this guy named Donahue, he said, yes, I will come and join you, Greg, to be part of an opportunity to meet you and perhaps fulfill an invitation which Phil had extended to you, as I understand it, maybe 20 some years ago to go on to his show, which you're unable to do because of your husband's condition, so here we are, August, or excuse me, April 30th, 2010, Jonesboro, Georgia, having a chance to meet Lillian Gobitis close. And I'm just so thrilled to make it all happen as there's the full cycle has just occurred. So thank you for inviting us, and I speak for Phil. And I know we have lots of questions to ask about you and your life, but your life is really in, in as an exemplar. So. Thank you for letting Thank us Thank you. Here. I love it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it was easier to book President Reagan than it was you. <laughs> uh, so I've paid my dues. I waited long enough now, Mrs. Close. Um, Lillian, please. <laughs> I, um, how shall we begin? Let me first tell you, um, I am, when I first became aware of the Jehovah's Witness drama that took place in the 40s, I was just overwhelmed by the courage of your people. I mean, the cops beat you up. The, the police would join the American Legion and confront witnesses coming in from out of town and physically beat them up. I've read stories of children, uh, not your case, but in other schools, of being beaten by the teacher. Salute this flag. And they'd beat the kid. He, you know, how old is he, third grade, fifth grade? And he wouldn't salute. How do you explain this, this courage? I mean, you were persecuted as no one else in the, the, certainly at that time, you couldn't walk down the street. People threw stones at you. Tell us about that. Well, we feel that Jehovah gave us the courage, that's for sure. Uh, in fact, my uh, 
my sister was taking the bank, de bank deposit in a paper bank, grocery bag. She was surrounded by a group of girls with straight pins ready to stick them in her. And she, they said, OK, Jean. And she said, oh, I have a cousin named Jean. I, she looks just like me. You might, meet, you might mean her. She's a witness, too. And they, they scratched her head and, oh, OK. And they walked away. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> anyway, that was... But they were prepared to stick her with pins? Yeah. They were all going to surround her and stick her with mm -hmm. pins. But anyway, that was ongoing. We yeah. had different things ongoing. And your father owned a grocery store. Yes, that was our livelihood. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our whole life centered around the congregation and the store. Mm -hmm. And you lived in Minersville, Pennsylvania. 90% Catholic. When did you start to feel the, the hostility or the, when, I mean, how does a little girl process this? Why are they beating my friends up? Well, this isn't the right sequence. Uh, we, in those days, everything was do it yourself. It was right after the depression. And we would work in the store and then in the evening, we had to, there was an enormous laundry. You didn't, my father had four butchers, and you didn't send out the butcher coats and the aprons. Mother and mother did all that. And in the evening, we would get the ironing boards out, six children, parents, and my sister Jean and I, we would, we would start the ironing. Well, it wasn't bad. We would listen to Red Skelton, the Lux Radio Theater, and we... While you were... While we were ironing. Doing the laundry and iron. Yeah. Yes. And we really had a happy life. We, were, we didn't feel deprived or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But it was really after we... A, after the flags were issued, transpired, mm -hmm. that, that it was open season on Jehovah's Witnesses. After the uh, Supremes. Yes, exactly. Decision. And they felt entitlement. Right. The, the Supremes said they had to salute, and they're not saluting. They're not pledging to the flag. And you and your brother. little brother, uh, William, were expelled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's, when the, that's when the violence began. Yes, yes. It, there had been in the 30s a lot of things, but this was, this was open season on Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any particular instances that jump out at you? Oh, You're yeah. an eyewitness, so Mrs. Close, I'm sorry to be pulling at your memory string here because oh, yeah. I'm not sure I could recall. You're talking here 30s and early 40s. One, one night, we, my father got a telephone threat. It was really his business associate, and he said, Wally, if you don't call a Philadelphia Inquirer and tell them you will now salute, there will be a mob coming to trash your store, and we don't know what will happen to you and your children. Dad, um, in the morning, Dad woke us up and told us what happened. And he said to my brother, take the four youngest out to Grammy and Grandpa, and you and Lillian come in the store. He went to the chief of police, and he said, nope, not in my town. And he parked the police car in front of the store all day long. Well, when we're in, as soon as we saw people gathering together on the sidewalk, we thought, oh, oh, this is the beginning. But nothing happened. And the whole day went on, and nothing happened. But we didn't, we didn't know that. And we, you know, we were prepared. That you also, so, sorry? Prepared that something might happen, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a, that was a, uh, a what shall we say, uh, that was the police placing the squad car in front of your house was a wonderful act of civility on the part of the police, you'd I agree. Know it, I know it, I know it. And whether it was that that kept a mob from forming or whether in the light of the day they recanted. Uh -huh. yeah. But anyway, that's what happened. Then another time, the local clergyman told his parishioners you need to boycott their grocery store as a recrimination. 
I did. should say that the Catholic uh, priests, pastors in the area, called for their their faithful to boycott Jehovah's I, I Witness. Was, I wasn't going to say that, but any, anyway, well, you know, why well, wouldn't you want to say that? It's because true. I have relatives that still go to the, that church. <laughs> uh, that Catholic church. Yeah, yeah, and and. Well, we're, we have good re, a good relationship, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But anyway, the, uh, the business just went down. Oh, the store was so empty. It was horrible. Well, Judy, I'm stuck. <laughs> oh, to pay the mortgage. oh, when it came time to pay the mortgage. We should say your sister's helping. Uh, uh, your daughter's helping. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Your daughter's helping you, memory. Yeah, yeah. I could... I could use that kind of help myself. So, <laughs> go ahead. You were going to say. Uh, but uh, couldn't pay the mortgage. Oh, couldn't, pay the, couldn't mortgage. pay the mortgage. Oh, and we had seen people, you know, um, on the street, you know, ready for the, ready for the poorhouse, and we thought, oh my goodness. Well, my aunt was an, was a devout Catholic, but she said family is family, and she loaned dad the money to tide us over. And in time, as time went by, people said, people resented being told where to buy their groceries. And besides, Wally makes that delicious lunch meat. And Wally, your father. My father. The lunch meat and sausages from scratch. And, and people came from miles around. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, we're, we're going back. And they did, and it picked right up, mm -hmm. happily. So. The Catholics who had been instructed by their pastors to not patronize your businesses, yeah. and that would include your father's, yeah. changed. They seemed to, somehow it dawned on them that this isn't right to, for, a, for a religious figure to tell you where to shop. Yeah. So they started to grow up a little bit, so to speak. You know, yes, that's true. That's in, true. A, in a way. Yeah. I... Uh, I'm, I just, I'm curious to know how you, did you homeschool? We homeschooled. And my cousin brought home <clears throat> our, our, your, our textbooks. Well, that was fine. They would get a letter from the school board saying, if you are not in the, with a proper teacher, you will be sent to a reformatory. Oh, what a horror our story but the newspapers always printed any about anyone that was expelled and we get a phone call from <clears throat> Paul, uh, Mr. Paul Jones 30 miles away there are so many kids that need a school that <clears throat> we are expanding our home and turning it into a school you can come if you like oh did we like and you can board here, if you like, Monday through Friday, which we did. There were nine of us in that house, three in a bed, turnover by mutual agreement. But it was, it was a safe haven. We felt good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm impressed with, how, with your smile, Mrs. Close. <laughs> and I mention that because on the outside, I have to confess, I, I thought... The, your faith was joyless. Joyless? Yeah. Far from it. <laughs> really? Oh, no. Um, the house-to-house -house ministry, as I'm told your door-to-door -door, uh, activity was called, yeah. just enraged people. From 1940, 1930 to onward, I went from door-to-door -door till now. Now I just, you know, meals on wheels and things like that is my territory now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, uh, when when you knocked, when you knocked on the door, yeah, how many people slammed that door right in your face? Yeah, that can lots happen. of them. That can happen. Some yeah. do. It is more apathy that uh, people don't respond. They, uh, in fact, when when I broke my hip and I was in um, rehab. Uh, one of the girls said, you know, I've studied all the religions and no one else goes door to door and tries to help people 
to learn about the Bible. But she said, we, we just don't, don't answer. I said, I know we have a word for it, home but hiding. <laughs> and so, yes. anyway, she... <clears throat> what, what, when the door, after you knocked, yeah. and the door opened, and were you, were you alone with your, with your brother? And who was with you when you were making this? In the early days, we went alone. And then later And how on. old were you when you were going alone? When you uh, first went alone? Nine. Nine. And then when I was 11 one time, I was talking to this man and presenting a book, a little booklet that we had. And all of a sudden he looked so startled. And I turned around and there was a police car. Well, when I walked it down, I saw that all the group from our congregation were in the car, so I felt secure. We got to the, this was in New Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Why were the congregation members in the police car? Going door to door without a license. I see. They were arrested. Yeah, they were arrested. And they took us to the... Um, you, then they, they put you in the cruiser as well. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. And they took us to a firehouse that had two holding cells. And that was the local jail. And you were nine now? Yes. No, 11. 11, 11 now. The, um, the churches, by mutual agreement, had let out early. And there, was, there must have been a thousand people milling around. And one girl knocked me on the arm. <laughs> that, but that, that was nothing. And uh, we, we were herded into the, poli into the firehouse. There were two holding cells. I saw my father in one. And I saw another, a young girl my age, with her, with her father in, in the other one. Her name was Eleanor. More about, more about her later. However, uh, they kept this for several hours. And then, then the mob got tired of it all. And th they dispersed. And they said, all right, you can go now. The women and children are fine. But the men have to go to the county courthouse on Wednesday. So Dad did. And he was given uh, five days in jail. And we went to see him and all like that. But OK, that, that was it. It was no I, big deal. <clears throat> but at age 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah. the cops are arresting you, your friends, your family. Yeah. Did you have yeah. that smile then? Yes. You kept your. <laughs> Did you understand why they were doing this? Yes. I just can't imagine being that young. Yes. My dad's in jail. <laughs> All my friends are in jail. Everybody hates us. <laughs> no, it didn't bother. No, remember Jesus said, they've done this to me, they'll do this to you. And we, we never forgot that. And, mm -hmm. and that's how we coped with it all. Yeah, just a couple of details for the person raised Catholic. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. Um, God is Jehovah. Yes. Um, you do not believe in the Trinity. No. Namely, because uh, the three wouldn't be one. They're one in purpose and one in harmony, but they, they wouldn't be one person because uh, Jesus was always talking to his Father, our Father which art in heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, you went to Kingdom Hall how often a week? Once? Twice? Tw twice. Twice yeah. a week. Yeah. And the fact is that your faith is Bible-centered. Wouldn't you agree? Bible what? Bible. The Bible is at the center of oh, your faith. Oh, the centered. Yes, absolutely, yes. You know, and why is that controversial? One wonders. <laughs> well, I'm asking you to ex tell me, did you understand the hostility that was coming down on you and why? Yes. Did you understand the whole patriotism, America's fighting wars, our boys, yes. at the, we called them at that time, yeah. were dying in the Pacific yeah. and in uh, the European theater. And you wouldn't salute the flag. I know it. I, I know mean, it. the raid. It's, un, it's unbelievable, huh? The contempt and the loathing yeah. that people had 
for Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. And it was about ignorance and, and bigotry. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And the, the man that I married was German. And the time that I was being expelled from school, he was being herded into the Esther Reagan concentration camp. He was, he was 22 and I was 12. We, we didn't meet until years later, but it was the same thing in Germany. Mm -hmm. he, he, took, knew, he knew what it was to get, to have a society against you and yeah. to inflict violence on you. Yeah. And of course in Germany, the state helped a lot, I'm sure. Oh, oh, oh. oh. They Ten, didn't like him at all in Germany. 10,000 were incarcerated and 2,000 of them were killed. Erwin was taken one day uh, to the headquarters. They put a gun to his head. Now will you, Heil Hitler? No, Heil means salvation. My salvation is Jesus Christ. He waited for the bullet. Oh, go back to your barracks. You're all alike. Can't do anything with you. And he didn't get the bullet. <laughs> your husband. My, that was the one who became my husband. That came yeah. that close to yeah. being executed. Yeah. So really, Ger <clears throat> Germany was far worse with 2,000. Yeah. And, and isn't, you were saying? With 2,000 killed, one was, one of his friends was beheaded, another got the firing squad. Oh, it was dreadful. And he came to the States and continued to be faithful to Jehovah yeah. 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 and honor the, um, what was expected of a active Jehovah's Witness. Yes, true. Even though he had seen a beheading, he almost was executed, yeah. you know, yeah. that's called faith right there. It is, it is, yeah. Uh, uh, and, and you had it. <clears throat> well, it was our, our continued activity with the congregation, the, the studying and, the, and doing our work, you know. Mm -hmm. that, that, you were never alone then. No. That must have been a wonderful feeling. You had a community. Yeah. Uh, it's not like you, well, your husband was out there alone in Germany probably, but you, you had a community of faithful that you, that trust, you trusted each other. Yes, yes. And you hung on to each other, am yeah. I guess, huh? Yeah, exactly right, exactly right, uh -huh. yeah. I can't imagine you, I don't think, speaking for myself, at age eight, I'm not sure I would understand this age. Well, when... Uh, when my grandparents came to live with us at that point, they, they were building a house, and Dad invited them to stay with us while it was in progress. When they were gone to their meetings, they were Jehovah's Witnesses, when they were gone to their meetings, Dad would say, why are they spending all this time reading those books and you know, going, going to the Kingdom Hall? And he would sneak in their room and read. Oh. This is the truth. Well, we would come home from, Mother took us to the Methodist Church, and we would come home, Ruth, what did you learn in church today? Do you know what the Bible says? And he, he would point out different things, you know, mm -hmm. the dead are asleep, and Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. Well, Judy, help. <laughs> um. Eventually, Oh, okay. Eventually, we we did become Jehovah's Witnesses too. Mm -hmm. And when I when I read that, when I heard that in the I, Isaiah 11, the lion would eat straw like the ox, and the little child would lead them, I thought, oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people say, well, that's how heaven will be. But it goes on and says, but the earth is full of the knowledge of the Lord like the water covers the sea. Oh, this was, this was the grandest thing. We, we really felt this. Filled your heart. Filled our heart, that's it. Mm -hmm. Tell me about William. I, did you call him Billy? Billy, yeah. Two years, or at least, what was he? Two, two grades? Two years he, younger. Uh -huh. yeah. So he was in the, how, what grade was he in when you were both expelled at the same time? Yeah, I was in seven and he was in five. And did you, People tried to tell me about what you know about. He wouldn't salute him. Yeah. How did the teachers respond? He said, he said, he came home one day and said, I stopped saluting. And I stopped saluting. Yeah. It was kind of a declaration of pride. Huh? Yes, 
yes, yes. He said, the teacher tried to put up my arm, but I held onto my pocket, and she, she couldn't put up my arm, you know. And that, that was it. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I have to take my own stand. I'd been kind of a chick, chicken before that. And so the next day, I went to the teacher and said, Miss Schofstall, I'm not, and I, I explained what I was going to do and why. And I, I was prepared for a recrimination. And she said, Lillian, oh, you are a dear child. Oh, but not the class. When they saw, oh, they were so angry. At you. At me. And when I came to school, they said, here comes Jehovah. And the pebbles were flying. <laughs> but I didn't care. I, was, I yeah. wasn't that much of it. You never were moved to weep, cry? No. <laughs> no, not actually not. Uh, I guess I was a little tough. I don't know. Well. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I loved school. Oh, and I was on the honor roll. You were the class president, were you not? Yeah, at that time. And I, I, just, I, I just thoroughly liked school. Well. I noticed that I noticed on my report card that uh, in home economics I got B. Home economics, my prunes with lemon were a delight. How could they give me a B? <laughs> but someone pointed out that kept you from the honor roll, having a B. And I, I didn't catch on to that, you know. But anyway, just those little things. It's not you, important. You feel that you got a B. <clears throat> Because you were a witness? Yeah, because of the flag salute and all like mm -hmm. that. Yep. Yeah. And the, uh, Radebush was our school superintendent. Radebush, yes. Yep. He was the defendant in the case. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Or uh, shall we say, yeah, defendant. Yes. And he said, oh, this, no, this. He was furious. And when it went to trial, Judge Maris accepted the case. Now, he, this is circuit? This was not the Supreme Court. No. We're at the lower this court. Was Go ahead. District Court of Pennsylvania. And this is before the Supremes came yes, in. Yes, absolutely. Okay. In Philadelphia. And Judge Ma the, uh, what's his name? Maris. Radovich. No, oh, Radovich. Yes. Radovich said to Judge Maris, Oh, these children have been indoctrinated. They didn't think of this by themselves. And Judge Maris said, I believe they're sincere. I've watched them. And I'm sorry, I believe they're sincere. Well, and he, he, he ruled that your expulsion was unconstitutional. Exactly right. Exactly right. Well, Radovich wasn't having any of that. Superintendent I will of schools. He yeah. the case. So in the appellate court. He takes it into another level of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there were three judges in that one. And Bill and I were on the stand in this case. You went to the, you were out, you testified. Yeah. And uh, they said to Billy, you know, why don't you salute? And he said, Exodus 20, have no other gods before me. And, and then they said to me, why don't you salute? And I said, First John 5, 21, little children, keep yourselves from idols. The uh, opposing lawyer said, I object. Of course, I nearly fainted. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> Judge Maris, the three judges. You fainted sure. because why would someone object <laughs> yeah. to your belief? I know. I thought everything's going our way. Why is it and now? And uh, uh, but the judge says overruled. That was very nice. Two lower court decisions yeah. were for you. Yes, and we felt so confident. So when Rodham says, "I'm taking it to the Supreme Court." Oh, piece of cake. Doesn't matter. <laughs> We've already won at the lower yeah, court level. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So one day, Mother and I were working in the kitchen, and Bill and Dad were downstairs in the store working, and there was a newscast in Washington today in the flag salute case. He said, ah, oh. there was a ruling of eight to one against Jehovah's Witnesses. You, you first heard about that on the radio? Or? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Oh, we couldn't believe it. We ran downstairs to the store and told Bill and Dad they were equally aghast. 
And, and after that, that's when it was open season on Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. Now let's go get them. You were, you were, you were, it was, it was okay yeah, it to was okay. push you around yeah. and worse. Yeah. Now we have two lower court, two lower courts yeah. saying this is unconstitutional. If you don't want to salute, you shouldn't have to salute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Supreme Court votes eight to one against the lower court. Yes, yes, yes. And in that majority was Justice Jackson. No, well, no, no, no. We're that's... not. We're not there yet. No, we're well, not. But think about this, Frankfurter. You he, have to salute. He was the main pusher for uh, against, being against against uh, us. You know, yeah. um, we have a right. The state has a right to expect a pledge to promote national unity. And, you know, that's, this was, I understand, the argument. Yeah. I'm sure they wouldn't put it this way, but it's yeah. pretty close to what they were it's saying. It's pretty close. Yeah. And William O. Douglas, uh, you know, here's the screaming liberal on the court. I mean, conservatives were hysterical about Douglas. Yeah. He voted against you. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other, well, Frankfurter, Douglas, Hugo, Hugo Black. Black. Yes. Some huge names in yeah. the history of American jurisprudence yeah. voted against you on the first, and that's when all hell broke loose yeah. and you were so persecuted, you and yeah. the other uh, faithful. Well, one time, on Wednesday nights we had home, home Bible studies with people and I was driving because mine was the last one. Dropped off mother and dad, dropped off Bill, Gene and I went to the last one. Then when we came back, I, I picked up mom and dad and a, a group of teenagers came out of hiding and start letting the air out of the tires. And then they start rocking the car with the idea of flipping it over. Finally, I noticed that they stepped back for a minute and I stepped on the gas and, and we got home safely. But we were, there was always something going on. Now the, the other thing uh, that sh should be known here is uh, Jehovah's Witnesses would not serve in the military. Yeah. Now you're not the first. Including my husband. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and I, he I, didn't kill any Americans. <laughs> I, when he was a German, when he was in Germany. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the prisons, every prison had a, an assembly of witnesses inside the mail, yeah. inside those prisons. Every warden would tell you at that time that their prison included Jehovah's Witness, an, an assembly of Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, very well behaved. I don't think any caused any trouble in prison. Yeah. I'm sure they were, I bet they were physically abused in prison, uh, but that was part of your faith. Yes. Yeah, don't serve in, yeah. war is not, what God wants. I mean, how do you explain this? It's like, if, what if they gave a war and nobody came? <laughs> mm. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't yeah? it be? Yeah. Yeah. But you read your literature and all you want to do was follow your faith and uh, oppose war and not participate in this not activity. Not participate, yeah. Well, a lot of faiths now believe that now. Nobody beat them up. That's true. <laughs> but a lot of things conspired yeah. to provoke this kind of persecution. Yes, yeah, it's true. Not the least of which was little Lillian Gobitis knocking on the door, <laughs> interrupting my coffee. <laughs> uh, you know, and people, what did you say when they opened the door? What did you say as a nine, a, year, eight year old? I had a presentation. Can you give us just a little bit of it? No, I can't remember. You can't remember? No. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was a, you a, had to be, I mean, there was a certain technique to this. Yeah, I had to. You couldn't say, give me money. <laughs> no. So <laughs> give, me the, give, me the, give me the nickel. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the booklets were. No, no, I, I said something about that. This explains why there are such sad conditions in the earth, you know, and, and what hope the Bible offers, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you, you had booklets? Yeah, a little book. Uh -huh. And it was a nickel. Yeah. <laughs> if you called on 20, how, 20 homes 
Now, I'm asking to just give us a guess. We're not yeah. going to hold you to this. How many gave you money? I guess 10. Yeah. Really? You were a 50 percentile I, I guess so. collector. I, that surprises me. I, I don't really know. You don't remember <laughs> no, it? No, I don't yeah. remember But you that. put the, what are we, a lot of coin, some dollar bills, right? No, only a nickel. <laughs> so yeah. if you got a nickel, that was a successful call. Yeah, yeah. And if they had further interest, we would call back. Uh -huh. And you would do this alone. I thought <laughs> those, were <coughs> those were the days. Later on, we went by two. That was better. Uh -huh. Can I ask a couple questions? What does Joseph Rutherford mean to you? He, he was the president of the Watchtower mm -hmm. at that time. And he was very nice to young people. I, I met him in Washington when he came to plead the case. Uh, the folks that were going to the Union Station to mm -hmm. pick, pick him up and take him to a hotel invited us to go along and on. Oh, I, I, was, I was very impressed. <laughs> so you actually went to the United States Supreme Court when your case was being argued. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What did you think walking into the court and actually your name's on the docket, go bite us. I didn't see that. Yeah, but, <laughs> but anyway, we went in and sat down. You know. How old were you then, Lillian? Uh, mm, that would be 1940. 40. I was born in 23. 40, 40. So you did go. You sat in the atrium. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, so tell, us, tell us about that. And anyway, uh, when Rutherford was speaking, it was dead silence. So that was also a clue. This is going to be one. Nobody interrupted him. And the court, be, the case before that, they were interrupting and interrupting. Just some civil court. Now, you're talking about the second decision now, the are you? First, no, oh, the, the first, first decision. The first decision. And nobody interrupted. I mean, didn't you think that was a sign of respect? Yes, I did. So you thought, hey, we're in business here. Yes, that's so go ahead, absolutely tell us. what I thought. And then, okay, and that's why it was so. I was so horrified. We were so horrified when it, when it didn't go through. And then with the Barnett, we went to Washington and... Second case, Barnett, second yes. Second case. Mm -hmm. And nobody thought to introduce that. I've never met the Barnetts, only a lot of telephone conversations. Same story, <laughs> the Barnetts, same yeah, as you. Same, yeah, yeah. And, oh, they were delightful, very nice. I talked to them yesterday on the phone, you know. We're all getting old, <laughs> uh -huh. pains and aches and all, but anyway, very, very fine. And, yeah, and we never got to meet them. But anyway, Hayden Covington argued that case. Hayden Covington being your lawyer. Yeah. The lawyer yeah. arguing for the witnesses. Yes. In exactly. both cases, huh? No. Rutherford in the in Oh, ours. right. The yeah. That's right. He was a lawyer. So. Yeah. And so it was in uh, West Virginia, Barnett, West Virginia, that Covington was your yes. lawyer. Yes, uh, yes. And you were there for that. Yes, yes, yes. And did you know that the... Uh, the the sisters were sitting in the same atrium as you? I should have figured that out <laughs> and said, introduce us. Yeah. But anyway, very shy. Uh -huh. <laughs> did, you, did you get a sense when you were watching that Barnett case, having remembered what was the re quiet reaction to Rutherford, what was the reaction to Covington during that Barnett case? Was it different? It was a little more. I, I don't remember to yeah. tell the truth. Mm -hmm. I think it was a little more interrupting, but more. not, I, I, mm -hmm. I don't remember, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, back to my husband. In 1946, in Nuremberg, Germany, now the, uh, all these 8,000 survivors would meet with the whole group for the first time in years after being incarcerated. You're talking Germany now. In, in Germany. Mm -hmm. My husband was organizing, he was helping to organize this convention. It would be on the parade grounds in Nuremberg where Hitler used to proudly parade his troops. Mm -hmm. But now he was gone and here we were. Okay. He and another man went to 
a castle where the uh, journalists. Journalists. journalists were housed. And they said, we want to invite you to our convention, uh, the journalists, uh, to the Sunday public talk. All right, what you may do is put it on the bulletin board. And they look there every day for their assignments and so forth. And just do that. By the way, you are invited to attend the, the trials, which were, were conducted by Justice Jackson. Mm -hmm. You were invited. The journalists were invited? No, the journalists were covering it. Uh -huh. that, that was covered. Who was invited? My husband. I see. My husband and his friend. And, and uh, they, uh, he said, oh, he said, what a privilege, but we have so much to do to get this convention going. And there are bomb craters to be filled. And oh, it, it was tremendous. So they said, we have to turn it down. But think of that. It, you know, Justice Jackson, there he was. Mm -hmm. You yeah. remember, did he read the decision? Uh, yeah. Do you remember when you first realized that you won? I mean, you were 20 something then. Yes, 20. What, what do you recall about what came back from the bench? I mean, do you remember any moments or something maybe one of them said? Just we were very, very glad. And then that opinion that Justice Jackson wrote was beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and it was on Flag Day. On Flag Day? Uh, in 19, 1943. And even though, even though the war was still on, it still all calmed down. It was so nice, so uh -huh. nice. However, in 1951, I went to Europe to different conventions and was invited to a gathering that turned out to be a musical gathering. And my husband was singing, my husband to me <laughs> was singing so beautifully. And I went up to him and told him what a, how, I enjoyed that and da da da, mm -hmm. and he he just kept smiling and I kept talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a talker, and when I walked when I walked away, he said to his buddy, "What did she say? I didn't understand a word of English." And oh, his buddy translated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, when he went back, he was assigned to Kiel, Germany as a traveling minister. And when he went back to Kiel, he took a crash course in English. So he could go to the missionary school up in South Lansing, right near Cornell University. Mm -hmm. uh, after he graduated, these two German ladies said, have we got a girl for you? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> and it clicked. And three months later, we were engaged and served in, in Austria, beautiful Austria, yeah. Uh, and I didn't know German, but I, it's sink or swim, it, mm. it, you, you learn. But you, you met him here. Where did you first meet him? In first Ger met him in Germany. And you were there for the convention? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a very devoted family you had. Yeah, someone gave me a ticket, and oh, I lapped it up. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, the, um, Oh, our children. Judy was, when Judy was in middle school, they, uh, they waited for her in the girls' room and knocked her down, start hitting her. And she had to fight her way out. And Steve, this is in the ladies' room this is happening? Yeah, yeah, in school, in school. And that was when she was in, in middle school. She would have been in seventh grade. And then... And our son, too, had his share. But Stephen, Stephen spent his time in the missionary work at home and in the headquarters for two and a half years before he got married. Mm -hmm. And Judy was seven years in missionary work at home. So they, were, they basically pursued all that. Um, Oh, oh, my husband spoke in 75 schools in the Atlanta area. They'd always say, D 
did you try to escape? Oh, you mean like Hogan's heroes? No, the, the guards who were not that dumb. <laughs> and, but anyway, it went over very well. And I spoke in 14 classes mm -hmm. ab about the fly case. Mm -hmm. And then that, that was it. We, we had a very happy life, very full, very happy. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you're not thinking, you don't know sad songs for you? No, <laughs> no, no. No, I feel like we had a storybook life, you know, and, and that Jehovah always helped us. We were never, you were, you know, we were always rescued. You were in private school, yeah. home school, yeah. separated from your friends, yeah. it was president like, of the class, <laughs> and you get the heave-ho. Yeah, yeah. But I, oh, we loved it in the in the school then, at the Joneses' house, you know. Oh, it was so relaxing, you know, no, no flack. It mm -hmm. was very good, yeah. And after Mr. Jones died, your father converted a, and one of your grocery store vans yeah. to a bus, right? Yeah, his pickup truck, bench, bench, and then we would go down lanes. And in the winter time, these little children were huddled in the snow, and anyway, we, uh, mm -hmm. a volunteer driver would pick them up, and and take them in. It was very nice. Can, can I flash back just a little bit? Because clearly decisions were made for you not to salute the flag. And for the camera, what was a normal salute? Could you show us how the salute was at the time? I feel very strange doing that. Well, I thought it was, it was your hand on heart and then out. Okay. Out stretch. Uh, palm up. Hand on the heart and then the palm yeah, up. Yeah, that's because right. Because this. Well, it looked too German-like, yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, so right. when they <clears throat> asked you to do that at school, clearly there was, uh, uh, at home, you must have had conversations with your dad and mom as to how to react to this. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yes, yeah, sure. And, and also we discussed the reasons, mm -hmm. looking up the scriptures. And they didn't push us. Right. They never pushed us. It was just our own decision, and, but they supported us. They surely mm -hmm. did. Yeah. You were actually at a convention where uh, Joseph Rutherford was at, where he actually talked about the consciousness of that. Yeah. And I know you didn't attend that particular session, but what did the Joseph Rutherford, how, how did that impact the two, you and Billy, about well, this? Well, one man had said, uh, is it wrong to salute a flag? It was a question and answer session session, which we hadn't stayed for, mm -hmm. and he said, well, I wouldn't because of Exodus 20 and, you know, ma many scriptures, because even though it says that, uh, oh, what does it say? That's right, I forget. <laughs> um, well, well, Exodus 20, oh. Um, you, you must not make for yourself a carved image or a form like anything that is in the heavens above, or that is on the earth underneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. You must not bow down to them, nor be induced to serve them, because I, Jehovah, your God, as a God, exacting exclusive devotion. Exactly right, exactly right. Yeah. In and what our Emmanuel said, that the stars represent the stars in heaven, and the, the stripes represent the rays of the sun. Mm -hmm. And that kind of ties <coughs> Excuse me. Kingdom Hall in Kenny, Bonk, in Kenny Bunk, Maine was burned to the ground. I think so, yeah. They put a rope around the necks of witnesses in Wheeling, West Virginia, yes. made them drink castor oil. Yeah. Happily, it didn't work until they got home. <laughs> <laughs> so you're able to laugh about that. <laughs> but that, it was horrible. It was horrible. Oh, it had to be. Yeah. And so I'm just going to gently, you know, I'm still kind of bedazzled by your smile after what you've been through. You know, you had to have your times of crying, no. of hanging on to <laughs> I, your... There were times we were scared, yes. But I don't remember crying. You never cried? No. After all this abuse. But it was frightening. And that's one thing my husband always said, to be brave does not mean that you're not scared. Mm -hmm. So you allowed that emotion to you accepted it but yeah. you never there was no depression or 
I mean, you had to lose friends, didn't you? Girlfriends? Oh, yeah. Out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You remember any of that? Did, did they talk to you or did they say you know, goodbye or what did they you do? You know, sometimes we advertised a, a Sunday talk by wearing sandwich signs and parading through town. And I remember these girls saying, oh, to think we used to be friends with her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was hoping I wouldn't run into them, but I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. After the decision, the Barnett decision, <coughs> things started to calm down. Was there any form of reconciliation with some of your friends? Did they ever reach out to you and say, Lillian, I'm sorry? This one girl became a witness. Did you? She was the smartest one in, in the class, mm -hmm. really. And she died recently and died faithful, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Close, I have uh, committed to memory this wonderful passage in Robert Jackson's uh, decision for the majority, which I'm sure you remember. So you'll have to bear up. I'm going to share it with you now. Yeah. Robert Jackson in the second case, yeah. eight to one in your favor. Yeah. No, six, six to three. three. Six, six to three, three sorry. Yeah. Eight to one against. Yeah, mm. that one, yeah. By the way, we should say Harlan Stone is the only dissenter in both, both yeah. cases. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. In, the, in the second case, when the Supreme said, oh my God, you know, they're beating, they're beating witnesses up all over America. Yeah. There was a killing, I believe. Jackson in the decision said, if there is any fixed star in our constitutional, constitutional constellation, constellation, it is that no official, high or petty, can prescribe what shall be orthodox in religion, nationalism, politics, or any other matter of opinion. And then he concluded by saying, and these officials may not force by word or act a belief therein. You can't force an American to believe anything. So essentially what that, what Jackson did was he looked down over that bench and he said to you, yeah. well you were older then, and your little brother, yeah. and all the witnesses, children who'd been expelled, he looked at them and he said, you obey your parents. Yes. I think that's a great, oh, great I, moment. I know, I know. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing, yeah. And you walked out of, after the decision, and what you probably, what'd you do, hug? And no, he didn't make the decision right then and there. He wrote, that's true, right? He, he wrote, would come yeah. down later. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the one you heard on the radio? No, the, you heard the bad one on the radio. The bad one, yeah, mm. yeah. Wow. Did you feel free? Do you recall? I yeah. Mean, yes, we did. Well, we went out and knocked on doors and nothing happened. No tin cans, no, no nothing, you know. And people didn't start to collect and, you know, um, like that. It was over. People was threw just, tin cans? Yeah. <laughs> Look at you laughing. In Branchdale. Huh? No, I mean, that's so stupid. <laughs> Uh, but you, you felt it. You saw the yeah. missiles coming we in. We saw them coming. <laughs> and, and we, we got out of there. You know, yeah. the normal reaction would be this. <laughs> yes. Ah! And you didn't respond that way. <laughs> no, no. And that's probably because you were a witness, huh? Because yeah. of the faith. Because we thought, what would Jesus do? When being reviled, do not revile in return. That's, that's when he always gave us the counsel. Mm -hmm. And you continue today to be a faithful Jehovah Witness. Oh, I pray that I am. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it gives you your... All the years, I don't, I don't think a month went by that I didn't, you know, either go door to door or do some form of witnessing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. A nickel was a victory, <laughs> right? I mean, that meant, that was a successful call, was yeah. it not? Yeah. A yeah. nickel. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Would you bring a handful of nickels back to the... But I have a friend and she said, you know, the days when we went by one, in fact, her father is the one that uh, designed the St. Louis Arch and uh, uh, st uh, the stadium in Hawaii. Anyway, he was in the car 
And she was up the hill talking to this man. They said, yeah, I'll take the book. And she, she held it. Dad, he's taking it. <laughs> 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 oh, this, she is a lovely person. They, Did anybody ever invite you in? Yes, sometimes, yeah. yeah. And what, what, uh, you had a little glass of no. milk or what? <laughs> when you went not, in? Not frequently, no. No, no, no. I imagine not. But you have had doors slammed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And then <clears throat> you began to, I'm not sure you could process at the moment. What a, you know, more than one legal scholar has said that the Jehovah's Witnesses, more than any other person or institution, shaped First Amendment law for this nation. Yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. You couldn't have known that then. Yeah. How? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just impressed at how you processed all this. Well, so, why would oh. your friends leave you? Why, would, why are people treating you this way? Why? And you knew, you knew that failing to salute angered people? Yeah, we knew. <laughs> and, you, and you did it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you once again. This is just plain terrific. And oh. one of the things I just wanted to spend a few minutes on was... We know you, your dad and mother, through really a visit from your grand, well, your mother's grandparents, your mother's parents, uh, kind of got caught up and felt that the Jehovah's Witness was a, a religion which you could follow. Yeah. And this around 1932. Yeah. And you started proselytizing around that time period, 32. Yeah. And then as we kind of fast forward to 1935, an issue that's raised in the religion is the flag salute, yeah. the mandatory flag salute requirement at schools. Um, and we talked briefly about Joseph Rutherford mentioning the fact that uh, it was a matter of conscience. And I'd like to know the dynamics in your family at the time. When Joseph Rutherford was talking about this in 1935, you had not gone public. You have not tried to go to school and not salute. So I'm just curious about conversations in the, within the house with your mom and dad and you and Billy. What, was, what were you talking about? I don't know. What Did you talk mean. much about the, the yeah. drama? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and we sort of, but my parents never pushed us. They, mm -hmm. You know, it's, like I said, that they supported us. But no one ever leaned over and said, Honey, "Do it, salute the flag." <laughs> Come on, oh. they're gonna kill us. Oh. Nobody did that. Nobody got soft. Nobody wavered. Yeah, but we didn't have much to do with people who would say that. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> But that decision, it sounds like, didn't come easily or quickly. It's not as if it was an instant oh. revelation. Oh, no. It, it took it a while. Came, it took a while. I was a big chicken. Hmm? When the teacher would look at me, I'd shoot at my arm and Where? move my lips. Mm -hmm. And it, it, took, it, it took my brother to mm -hmm. spearhead it. You, know? you remember the first time you didn't salute? Oh, do I remember? Tell us. Uh, actually, we respected the flag. And my brother wrote a letter to the, to the school board saying, it's not that I don't love my country, I love my country, but I love God more. And today the, his copy of that letter is in the Library of Congress. However, I'll And you, when you first, the, you must remember that first day. Oh, do I remember? Did they look at you, stare at you? What do you remember? Oh, they. They really stared at, at me, you know. And so I should have, you know, being class president, I could have called a meeting and explained it. And I was, I guess I was very shy. But some girls would come and say, Lillian, what is it about? And one-on-one -on -one was fine. That was just great. I would explain. And they were very pleasant. Those girls were very pleasant. You weren't scared when you, when you didn't yes, salute I was, the first day? Yes, I was scared. You bet, you bet. You did yeah. stand. Did you stand? No. <laughs> I didn't know if I should stand or sit. These days I would stand 
respectfully. But those days, I, I thought, what do I do, which is the right thing to do? And I sat, and, and that made it worse. You know, I used to be, I was raised Catholic, as you may know, and I'm a graduate of the University of Notre Dame, proud to say. Oh. Um, and I, I remember walking down a street in West Cleveland, on the west side of Cleveland, after going to see my girlfriend. I would walk home. I was, what, 14, 16? And I passed a <coughs> building that said Kingdom Hall. And Mrs. Close, I have to make a confession to you. I remember thinking, boy, those people are weird. <laughs> and I had no evidence to make that yeah. judgment. Yeah. But I was in the Catholic Church, the one true church. My pope couldn't make any mistakes on matters of faith and morals. Catholic school, Catholic high school, Catholic hospitals, Catholic churches, we were the best. Yeah. I remember those days. <laughs> yeah, and Jehovah's Witnesses, what goes on in them, you know? Yeah. And the imagination takes over. What kind of oogly boogly is going on in there? <laughs> and, you know, it's all untrue. Yeah. It's all in my head. Yeah. And I have to confess to you, I, you know, I wasn't politically aware enough, and there was no drama like this that I recall in Cleveland. Yeah. I think I would have thrown stones at you. And I'm not proud to, it, it embarrasses me to say that. But, you know, we have to, all of us, look in and yeah. understand yeah. Yeah. the hostility that, I mean, I was capable of it. And I don't think you appreciate, unless you're willing to confess, you know, your own bigotry, your own prejudice, you'll never get through this. You'll never yeah. learn anything. Yeah. That's true. You know, and I have to thank the witnesses. All those people who got beat up, yeah. a, a witness was castrated. Yes, yes, I was yes. Iowa? I, I was the Midwest. Somebody saw him a few years ago. And he's still faithfully serving. He survived. But with a very high voice, <laughs> you know, because of the castration. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I assumed he was dead. I, I guess by now, yeah. No, but I mean, you know, I've never heard of a castration survival. And oh, this guy oh, oh. did, huh? Yeah, he lived, he lived. Wow. And same with Tar and Feather. Tar and Feather. Yeah, the, Mr. Stephen List in, in, in the Midwest somewhere. Um, he, he was tarred and feathered, and he didn't die right away, but he didn't live too many years after that. Mm -hmm. I, I stepped on your line, and I just want you to just mm -hmm. take a second. I want to go over it again. Um, a witness was castrated, yeah. and what was the consequence of that? What did you say he... Oh, that uh, someone saw him a few, several years ago, and they said he's still a faithful witness, but with a high voice, a high pitched voice, because of that yeah. action, you know. Yeah. Here you are, here we are in 2010, and Phil Donahue, Greg Peterson travel to come to see you. Does this surprise you that there is an, there's such an interest in what happened yes. in 1940 and 43? Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. And I was scared to death. <laughs> but you make me feel so calm. <laughs> well, oh, no, no. But it, the, the, the amazing thing is the name Gobitis, Lillian Gobitis, is a very pivotal name which led to a Supreme Court case, which led to a Barnett case which in fact now that group of cases is quoted as oft as most any case in the United States Supreme Court history. Yes, I understand that. Usually they, they say that. In fact, someone said, Lillian, tell Obama I thanked him for the stimulus money. I loved it. <laughs> and, I, and someone said, tell him that you were the, the case. He would have studied that in his law. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I thought, why do I want to you know, and this and that? I, I didn't actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does, does, does it ever, you wake up some morning and strike you that you are really part of a continuum of cases which really created the law that we really know as civil, and the civil liberties law? No. <laughs> no. Life is so full. <laughs> no. But I, I, I don't mean to, to uh, be facetious about this and to laugh or something because we were scared. We were very frightened. And it, it was not funny at all. But I guess it's a reaction. I don't know. When you talk about it, do, do your kids ask you about this? Your children. children? Sure. Yeah. Um, your daughter yeah. took some abuse. Yes, yes, yes. That would be at least no, many years after you. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and did she come home and tell you what happened? Yes, yes. What did she say? What do you remember your daughter saying? Well, just that the kids beat her up and, uh, you know, hit her, hit her, and, and she fought her way out of it. And my husband said, Lillian, go to the school counselor and, and talk about this. And I did, and he said, Mrs. Coase, he said, we are not going to put up with this. Those, those uh, kids that did it, they and their parents have to apologize. And they did. That was good. Uh, I see. Um, and this is long after the decision, isn't it? Oh, my. Uh, so you went through this as a child. This had to break your heart when your daughter came home. Here we go again. Uh, yeah, here we go again. Right, right, right. Yeah. But you stayed the course. Your faith sustained you. Yeah, true it is, yeah. And you, you're a very happy woman now. Actually, I, I really feel like I led a story with life. I had so many, so many nice things in my life, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's no doubt you will join Jehovah, after you die. Well, my hope isn't the heavenly hope, but it is the, to live on a, you know, like Jesus said, other sheep I have which are not of this fold, and them also I must bring. And we feel that that's, some, some have a hope of an earthly paradise. Mm -hmm. And that's my hope. That was from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Not of this world. But, but that this earth will, Finally, like the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. And we feel that we'll see that. Mm -hmm. And you can see, like, the horrible things that are going on now. And people living in tents, you know, in Sacramento and Las Vegas and, and Tampa. Awful, awful. People that had a station in life. And now they've lost everything. And it is like Jesus said that in the time of the end, there would be earthquakes and, and sickness, cancer is out of, out of control. And also in Revelation, the four horsemen, one of them was representing inflation, a, a quart of wheat for, for a day's wage, which was hyperbole, but it was, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, showed that that there would be great inflation on the earth. And we see that now, and that's why we know it, it surely must be close. We didn't mention this, but witnesses lost jobs. Absolutely. Oh, that's right, Eleanor, my friend. In one day, she and her brothers were expelled from school. Her father in the coal mines, the, the, they had a flag salute ceremony. And all the witnesses were fired on the spot. Her mother worked in a, in a, a shirt factory. Same thing. They, were, they had a ceremony and were fired on the spot. There they are with three children. You know, that was awful. So what the men did, they, they, uh, they would have these illegal coal holes, you know, blast. Blasted it through their own mining, you know. And coal other, holes. Coal holes. And, and what was the purpose of the coal hole? Money. <laughs> to get, to sell the coal and get, get some subsidy. Uh -huh. So they were their own mining company, so Yes, to speak. exactly right. Yeah. And yeah. did you share money? I mean, you must have 
if the neighbor didn't have for milk and bread? Yeah. I don't know. I'm asking. What well, kind? Dad with the grocery store, uh, he he kept books. People just put it on their charge account, and then when it was all over, a lot of them never came forward to pay. Dad didn't go after them. That's all right. Mm -hmm. you know. And and a lot of times, if if uh, needy people came through, that you know. Uh, he would say, just go shop and don't go to the cashier. Mm -hmm. Were you ever knocked down? No. Were you ever punched? Or? Yeah. <laughs> like I said, in that mob, I got a big punch on the arm. And, you know, yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the legacy of the Gobitis case? As we look here today and you say, what, what impact did your case followed up by the Barnett case. And maybe that's something you, when you've talked to the Barnett sisters, you talk about. Do you ever, I mean, do you ever kind of reflect at well, three of you? we see little children 